El Slizo Cafe night. Kermit and Fozzie come out of the El Slizo and walk to Fozzie's car. A little 1951 two-door Studebaker. Fozzie slaps the fender. Our chariot to the stars! Wow, I didn't expect to be traveling in such class. See, I'm kind of short on money. A hand suddenly reaches into the shot and fans out five $100 bills in front of Kermit's nose. What is this? Widen to see Doc Harper holding the money. $500. Think of it as an advance. An advance? You're in bi show business, right? Say yes! Say yes! Well, I want to do business. Take the money. Kermit warmly takes the bills. A small TV shop sits next to the El Slizo. In the window are a bank of half a dozen TV sets. Doc steps out in front of it. You see, Mr. Frog, I am a businessman with a problem. Let me show you what I mean. Doc takes a TV remote control from his pocket and presses a button. The six TV sets flash to life, and on them we see... Cliffhanger. And scene. And scene. <laughs> Part two coming next week. Amazing. Amazing. I think we just do the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, we, just, we don't do what we're watching anymore. We just do Muppet <laughs> yeah. scenes. Yeah. Muppet fan fiction. Oh, I'm fine with that. I, I had a I had a great idea that I don't know. I still have the idea, but I don't know how to make it a reality. I want to do a pot. I think I told you about this, Ryan. I want to do a whole podcast with us as puppets. Yes, you Ooh. have. I like it a lot. I, right? I mean, I think that would be. There's no Muppet or puppet podcasts. There are none, and maybe that's for a reason. But I would like or to maybe, think that maybe, maybe we're pioneers. Yeah, I think people. Just I'm I'm very fun. into this idea. Right. Come on. And so it's it's very difficult because I've watched many of Muppet documentaries on how Jim Henson and, and uh, Frank Oz and all them controlled their puppets. And usually it's multi people. So we would probably have to get like we would have to be controlling the mouth and speaking because that's kind of how you get the lip sync going. And then we would probably have to get somebody else working our arms and doing <laughs> doing the arm motions, which would be so. So uh, are we creating our own puppets or is this? I mean, I, I'm not – I've looked up ways to make Muppets. It's very difficult, but I think that <laughs> we can make simple enough ones to get the point across that these Muppets are us. Like, again, th these Muppets are going to just look like us. But Oh, okay. Right. It's just going to be uh, – just, So kind of like, like a crank anchors situation. Right, exactly. And we just got to do the podcast like we like nothing's, nothing's changed. Nothing's different. I like anyway. it. Anyway, welcome to the Average Nobody's Podcast number 108. For January 22nd, 2021, uh, you can find us on AverageNobodies.com, and uh, from there, you can find us on podcast services. Just search Average Nobodies, and uh, YouTube.com slash The Average Nobodies. Twitter, at Average Nobodies, blowing up. Oh, man, the retweet from Dave Portnoy, that's what, it, that's what it'll do you. So is that, I can't, that's got to be like such a tiny taste of what it's like to be like popular on Twitter. I have it's got, constant yeah. notifications, constant yeah. I, it's crazy. I, it, we were getting them all night and into today, too. It, so Ryan put out a, a tweet of he bought the uh, Barstool Fun sweatshirt, which mimics the uh, Michael Scott fun run. What, what is it, Ryan, the whole the whole slogan? So it's like the so he, it's like the Dave Portnoy Barstool Fund for small businesses. So, I don't know. It's a Race big for the cure. Thing. Yeah. Race for the cure. So Barstool mimicked it and sold it and all the proceeds go to the Barstool Fund. I also bought a Borelli shirt, but Ryan took a picture with it and posted it and Dave Portnoy retweeted it, which is fantastic. Uh, he said he needed the carbo load for the, <laughs> which is a great, right. which is a great call to the office, which is, you know, it, if you're donating to a fund, if uh, you know, a fund that Barstool is doing and you reference the office, I don't think there's a way that Dave Portnoy could not retweet you. Like uh, yeah, I thought it was right just gonna get lost else. in the shuffle of his he's, things, but I think that was a sweet spot. Yeah. He's actually very good about that. Too. He is very good about that stuff. It's it's very it's very strange. But I mean, over it was like thirteen hundred likes right on the on that thing, which is bananas yeah. for anything that we've ever done on average. Nobody's so pretty. That's where cool. that's, that's that's what's happening. That's what's happening. All right, we're gonna get into celebrity birthdays, but we don't have our we did our Ryan's new intro last week, and now we don't have it this week. So Ryan's going to go ahead and sing it for us. It's time for everyone's favorite <laughs> game show, Celebrity Birthdays. Who is it? Who is it? Wonderful. Uh, all right. So today's Celebrity <laughs> Birthdays were bad. Very, very bad. So we're going to get into it. 
Um, all right. Right, Matt, we're on the hand raising system, right? Yeah, we're on the hand raising system. I got you guys. I got you guys. Um, Adam, you got the uh, points up. Let's hear a points roundup going into this. I do. So the current point standings are Matt with ten and a half, Ryan with twelve and a half, Adam with nine, and Mitch with one. Perfect. Okay. All right. Here we go. Number one. <laughs> This greasy cherry can be found under the Tuscan sun. You don't want to mess... Uh, sorry. You don't want to mess with her adopted son. Her dating profile reads, must love dogs, but be careful. She's unfaithful. Ryan? Diane Lane? It's Diane Lane. Son of a bitch. What, what gave it away? Unfaithful. Yeah, unfaithful. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I saved unfaithful for the end. Obviously, adopted son is Clark Kent. I was going to uh, say Olivia Newton-John up until a lot of faithful. If you got the I, – there's a semi-deep I, cut right off the rip, the greasy under cherry. Under the Tuscan sun. Well, under the Tuscan too. sun, yeah. That's and a greasy good one. cherry from The Outsiders anyway. Um, um, yes, 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 yes. How old is sweet, sweet Diane Lane? How old is Diane Lane? Yes. I'm going to say she's 58. 58. Okay. <laughs> I was going to go way higher. <laughs> Let it rip. Was, Let it rip. Who knows how old uh, she is? I'm going to say 64. 64. Diane Lane is 56. Oh. Very close, Ryan. Very close, <laughs> you want, Ryan. Do you want to hear what I was going to say first? Were you going to say 80? <laughs> I was going to say 71. <laughs> what? I, I got to be honest. 56 know. is younger than what I thought she is just because I think she's been in movies for so long. Because I so remember, I like, obviously, I remember from The Outsiders first and foremost, and that was a very long time ago, and all those actors 56, are, really? 56, yep. Wow. So, yep. so I went off my mom's age. That's okay. That's what I was thinking. Are they the, same, everyone used to, are they the same age? They're close. <laughs> yeah. My mom. My mom's 57, so. Diane Lane's your mom's sister, and <laughs> they're twins. They look very similar. Yes, they do. Unfaithful is say. very traumatizing. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> all I don't right. talk about it. So... No points awarded that, right? No, I got it. Ryan got Ryan. Oh, got right. one Di- Ryan got Diane, Diane Lane. None for the age, because we said none if you get within age. a year, right, it's half a point. We didn't say that. Didn't we no. say that? No, you no, gotta get the. You age. Gotta nail it. Wait, what do we say half point for then? Oh, half, it... if you get the character. Oh, okay. Like, okay if you okay. can't guess the name. Okay, okay, my mistake. Okay. Number two, this man will sell you a wooden stick, or help you crew an intergalactic freighter. He's dead now, but we will remember his chest pains forever. Adam? John Hurt. John Hurt is the answer. He died in 2017. But if he were alive today, how old is John Hurt? Wooden stick, Harry Potter. Nice. You like that, Oliver? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, He was in in Alien, too, right? Yeah, so yeah. chest pains is the is the alien reference and the intergalactic freighter. Um, he was fucking old, eighty two. That's how old he would be today, right? You're guessing on. Yeah, I'm just clarifying. Okay, eighty two. All right, Ryan. I'm gonna say seventy seven. Ooh, so John Hurt died when he was seventy seven, and <sighs> he would have been eighty one today. Wow. No, we did say we were going to do half a point if you were with the year. Yeah. No. no. See, no. Now, see. Yeah, it's over. No you points. You blew it, Adam. No points. You okay. Blew it. Okay. So, again, we're already getting into actors that have died. So, <laughs> that, that's how good of a day it is for celebrity birthdays. Number three. And I have four of them total. I don't know if I said that. This actress has her head on a swivel for good roles. Unfortunately, not many have come her come her way since her debut in 73. This actress has had her head on a swivel for good roles. Unfortunately, not many have come since her debut in 1973. It's an obscure one. Uh, All right. And I will give you the character she played. In the movie that she's most famous for, her name is Regan. Regan. <laughs> nothing? I got nothing. The answer is Linda Blair, famous for her role oh. as Regan in The Exorcist. Head on a swivel. Oh. 
Ooh. Ooh, okay. Head on a one. swivel. Nice. That's uh, the dunk. Okay. I didn't know she died. So no 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 she she is not dead. This is John, oh, okay. this John, John Hurt was the most famous next person in line. He happened to be dead. Um, okay. Well, so, so Linda Blair fans, please. She's yeah, not she's dead. She's not dead. She's not dead. How old is Linda Blair? Alive. Um, yes. Today. You go first, Adam. I have no idea. Yeah, Adam, Adam go first. Today. Ryan's been going first. Sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Okay, Ryan. Um. <laughs> I'm going to say she's 61. Ooh, she is 62 years old. Oh, so yeah. close. So close. Linda Blair. Okay. I can't believe we were – I was, I'm impressed that we're like even in the – I was, took a shot in the dark. I had no yeah. idea. Okay. Because she was a kid in The Exorcist. Yeah, she's very young. Yeah. Right? And that was 73. Um, okay. I was trying to think like what movie came out. Here we go. She's the same age as my dad. Uh, nice. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. My dad's birthday is in August. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no one – Known, here we go, known best for his role in The War with Grandpa, this foodie lives by the, ru- the rule of the triple Ds. He's from Columbus, Ohio, but you can find him in Flavortown. Ryan? Uh, Guy Fieri. That is correct. Guy Fieri. Fuck. <laughs> so that's, that's it. <laughs> How old is Guy Fieri? <sighs> See, it's the frosted tips, you know. He, never, he could be 40, he could be 75. Um Sorry. I'm going to say Guy Fieri is 53. Okay, Adam? I'm going to say 52. Guy Fieri is 53 years old. Son of a bitch! There you go. 53. Nice. The rare double get. Nice. There you go. Perfect. Wow, big day. (sighs) Big Guy Fieri fan, Ryan is. I love him. He helps the small businesses, too. There was literally no other actors that I could even pull, like, menial roles from today. Like, none that none that I could pull either, like, no good clues. Like, I haven't seen the movie or I don't know the movie that they're famous for. Like, you know, you go on IMDb and it's like, when you go on the birthday list, it has the person's name. And then next to it, they're, like, most known movie. Like, what they're known yeah. for. I had no idea for any other people. It was pretty bad. So the, then if you uh, didn't know, we wouldn't have known either. Yeah, and I was like, and I was trying to make it like, I want to I want to make these fun with like movies we've all seen with multiple movie cl- clues in it. So, I mean, those, I mean, obviously Guy Fieri is not an, a, first and foremost an actor. You know, he's, yeah, he's, he's a, a reality TV celebrity, yeah. But I guess he was in War with Grandpa, which I don't know what it, what it is, but it's Robert De Niro and I'm sure he had large glasses. We'll get to that later. <laughs> hey, Matt. What? So what I'm, did I'm I miss? looking at the, no, I'm just like looking at the thing. Just like random ones, the uh, you know in old school the the band yeah. at the beginning. Oh, the damn band. It's, yeah, it's that guy's birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how. Who yeah, we wouldn't have gotten that. Yeah. One. You know the you know the man who laughs. The it's like an old black and white movie where like the character that's where the Joker came from. Yes, I, I saw that the, guy and I was like, I, the name is recognizable. What's his name? Conrad Veidt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I would have got that. Right? How old is Conrad Veidt? He's like 150. <laughs> he is 230 years. <laughs> he, well, he died in 1943. So. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, he didn't even get to see the end of World War II. <laughs> the, uh, the guy from the saddest show of all time, uh, it's his birthday. Of course, the saddest um, show of all time, one of my favorites. The Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> oh, I mean, I know it. I, I know. Yeah. And then the oldest brother from... Malcolm in the middle, but I, I don't know yeah, how I've gotten it, so that. Yeah, who, Masterson, he's he's the younger brother of the kid from that 70s show, right? Mm. Oh, he is. Yeah, he was like in trouble for some kind of underage thing. He's on trial for multiple rapes. Yeah, that's not great. Mm. Rape is no. what it is, yeah. Still not great. And then the guy from Suits. Yes. But those well, are tough. If Connor yeah, was on, we would have put the Suits one in, but he's not. <laughs> hey, I watched season one of Suits, and I liked it. Yeah, it was a waste of time, probably. <laughs> All right, let's get into what we're well watching. Done. Let's get let's get into what we're watching. Uh, who wants to start? So we all watch Night Stalker. You guys want to start with that first, and then Ryan, you can roll into yours. Yeah, perfect. Okay. I didn't finish Night Stalker just for the just okay for the heads up. Oh. Didn't finish it all the way. But anyway. well, it was awesome. It's pretty good so far. So I'm glad. I think we. I think Night Stalker was a great 
intro for Adam with these true crime documentaries. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Because it was, it, honestly, it was one of the better ones I've seen, um, like, on any streaming platform. I, I thought it was really well done. Like, I love the, the two detectives that they interviewed mainly. I thought were very, like, captivating. I feel like they like, could was, be yeah. characters, like, they could be real movie characters. Yeah. Like, narrative yeah. movie characters. Um, so I, Adam, what, what, did, what was like your favorite, I don't know if you had like a favorite part of it or. I was just like, I don't know if I'd call it like a favorite part, but I just could not, I watched the whole thing. I could not believe how close they were so many times and somebody else would screw up the investigation. Yep. How about the one where, um, as far, as far as I've got, they did that one where, uh, they were sitting at the, uh, what the fuck? The dentist's office. Yep. Yeah. And they waited there and waited there and waited there. And then the day, the first day they installed the alarm system and they weren't there, he shows up and the alarm system doesn't work. Fucking crazy. Yep. That sucks. Yeah. Like one of the, the crazier parts was that they had like his, they kept finding shoe prints. So there was like no fingerprints yeah. anywhere. And That's then they all went, they had to link all the crimes. And it was a, in a Via shoe. Yeah. Right. So it wasn't like a Reebok or a Nike, like a popular shoe brand. So they went to the manufacturer and there was only one pair of shoes sold in california yeah it was because that, it was like black. his size yeah um yeah. they knew it was black and they knew it was like a size 11 so, so but then they couldn't tell where it was sold before we go too deep into it let's get an overview of what so what is this 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 is a, a mini series on netflix and it follows the crimes of that he has a few different names what were some of the names that he got like the nicknames it's like the break-in killer yeah, there was a bunch of different names, and then they ended up landing on the Night Stalker. Yeah, uh, right. His name's Richard Ramirez. And that's what, like, he started calling himself. That was the one he liked. Yeah, the Night Stalker. So yeah. that, he started calling himself that when he attacked people. This reminds me of the East Area Rapist um, yep. documentary. It reminds me a lot of that. It also reminds me of a lot of um, shit. What's the show with um, the show that we love? I mean, the one with... Uh, God, it's on Netflix, and we might not get a third season. Oh, Mindhunter. Yeah, Mindhunter. It reminds yeah. me a lot of that, um, a lot of that kind of detective work. But this is like truly real. And there, but it was, and it was crazy because all the like the documentaries or miniseries that I've watched on like these real life criminals, they all have a pattern. Hmm. So like they all like you know the East Area Rapist was targeting women of a certain age, and like women that lived alone. And then, you know, he would, like, rape or murder. This guy was all just over the map. all over the place. Yeah. He yeah. All over the place. He just, like, picked things at, at will. He he was a child molester. Yeah. He didn't just, like, rape women. He didn't just murder them. Some he didn't murder. Yeah, sometimes he old would do, like, people, multiple in one night. People. Yeah, old people, yeah. young people. Like, the, like, he killed, like, an elderly. It was, like, these two elderly sisters, like, the yes. yeah. Like, yeah. Asian, like, 80 years old. I mean, it, so yeah, I think that too made it so much harder. I thought at the beginning there were a lot of there were like I felt like there were a lot of Asian people that he mm. went after, but like then you know he he started like everybody and anybody. Well, how about the I'm not sure if you got in there, Matt, but like the like the forensics woman, like her neighbor. Yeah. Was oh attacked. yes, yeah, yeah. The lady across the street. Well, yeah, she was adjacent to the house, and she was like, she, she was like, um, handcuffed to her bed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. And Bananas. she like pulled pulled the bed close enough to the window so she could like yell for help. It was just crazy. Yeah. Um, but I, it was like it was very well done. I liked the two detectives, and I read like uh, I didn't read the article because it was just stupid. But the headline of the article was Netflix presents a one sided documentary on the Night Stalker. Oh, I'm sorry, did we not get what the Night Stalker's version of what happened? Wait, like, was that a gripe? Someone posted a gripe about how they covered it? They just said that they didn't think it was a good documentary because it was, like, so, like, police, like, they favorited the police in the investigation. Yeah. Do we need Do we need the, the rapist and the child yeah, molester's version understand. of what happened? I don't understand. Were, were, the, were, uh, were the two detectives going around raping and killing people, too, that we're not just aware <laughs> no. of? Yeah, nope, no. they're the ones trying to solve the crime. Jesus Christ, it's so fucking bizarre. Oh, like, so I, I understand there's, like, this weird fucking like cloud hanging over police right now for whatever you know i mean they just gotta like put everybody in the same basket but come on like that's ridiculous it's yeah fucking ridiculous ryan actually i do my my favorite part was like it wasn't really the end but how they how they how he gets caught is my favorite part yeah i won't and, say and it's, it's, it's very fitting that, but it's very fitting too 
Yeah. Like, just based on, like, what he did. I know the Richard Ramirez case. Don't tell me the details of it because I, I don't know it, like, like in depth. But, like, I know that he was caught. Um, so I'm excited to watch a crime documentary that ends in a payoff. Because most of the, some of the times, and most of the times, for the ones I've been watching, they don't. No. Right. There's not a great payoff for them. So. And I did, like, Frank Salerno, like, I, I just want to watch, like, a story of his life. Yeah. He was so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he was, like, fresh off another, he was already famous from another, like, case. Yeah, like, some he was the, like, here the we strangler. go again. Yeah. The Hillside Strangler or something. Yeah. And then they were like, oh, like, this is a once-in-a-lifetime case. Like, you made it. Like, and then he goes into this Night Stalker thing. But yeah. I love the scene when, like, him and Gil first started partnering up. Mm. And, like, after, yeah. like, they were just working, like, 24 hours a day. And then yeah. he's like, yeah, we would go to this little, you know, we'd go in this alley or, like, through this restaurant to the back door. And you'd, like, knock on the door and they'd slide the thing. And you either knew the password or you didn't. And, like, yeah. if you didn't know the password, the owner closed the slot. If you knew the password, she opened it up. And that's where, like, all the police would hang out and talk about their cases because it was just all of the cops in there. Mm. So they weren't worried about, like, you know, people overhearing things or reporters being in there. Um, so I thought that was cool because you, you think of that only as, like, something that happens in the movies. But they yeah. actually really have those type of places, which seemed pretty cool. So, uh, I, I like, I watch, um, American Horror Story and one of their seasons was American Horror Story, like 1984 or whatever. Uh, and like there was a Richard Ramirez character in it, uh, who was played Richard Ramirez and, uh, it was pretty nuts. It gave, it gave the character like a supernatural element cause it's American Horror Story. And, uh, like the, the guy that played him was way too handsome to be playing what Richard Ramirez actually looked like. Well, they were talking about in, like, the final episode how, like, there were people, like, outside the courthouse that, like, loved him. Like, yeah. w- women who were, like, supported him and loved him. I'm like, this guy's... Sending a- him pictures and stuff. Like, yeah. So strange. It's like, how are lonely so are strange. you? I mean, he one, he's not, like, a good-looking guy. But even if he he's- was, he's a little child molester, he's a rapist, he's a murderer... And There's always gonna be. It's like the obsession with uh, Charles Manson. Like he was yeah, married right. to some super hot chick while he was uh, like towards the end while he was in jail. It's funny. Like how I don't know, but anyway, highly recommend for anyone into true crime documentaries or just like really well produced documentaries. Um, Night Stark on Netflix was very good. Matt, I'm interested to uh, hear your. I will finish it. Opinion soon. on the end. I just got sidetracked by another show that I'll talk about when my time is up. Perfect. Uh, so I'll, I'll get into mine. So I watched the Tiger documentary, shocker, um, on HBO Max. So it was a two-part documentary, and I didn't really know a lot about it going into it. I actually thought he was going to be involved, Tiger, but he wasn't. So this was more mm. done um, from people that knew him when he was a kid and then people that knew him like when he was a golfer, too. So you had family friends. You had his ex-caddy. Um, and then you also had one of the, one of his many mistresses who was on, Mm. she's, she's exclusively in part two, but I will say for him not being involved, it wasn't really necessarily a hit piece, which I was kind of afraid of because it's so easy to just like, you know, turn him into this villain because he cheated on his wife. Mm. Um, but they do a really, really good job of showing how much pressure he had on him from go. Like, it it was insane. His first TV appearance was when he was two years old. He was on the Bob Hope show with his dad, (laughs) like, hitting a golf ball. And every And every time his dad would talk about him, he talked about him as this, like, mythical figure. He's like, my son's going to change the world. He's going to bring world peace. He's not only going to be the best golfer of all time. He's going to be the best humanitarian. He's going to be like Gandhi. And this is all when he's, like, you know, five years old. And... (sighs) They have all this childhood footage of him playing golf and, you know, in the house and all this stuff. And it's, I thought it was, they got like, you know, footage from his mom, his parents. It's all like professional footage. It's all news camera footage. Mm. So he's just constantly in front of the camera, constantly had all this pressure and he exceeded it. He's like going to be either one or two of the, you know, he's either going to be the best golfer of all time or the second best, depending on how you feel. And it was just kind of insane, like, how well he played. But they interviewed a couple 
um, golfers that played with him in the late nineties and early two thousands and just like how dominant he was. It was, it was insane. Like he was winning major tournaments. Like he was winning the masters, the British open by double digit strokes, which yeah. has never been done before. will never be done again. He was just like, so clearly the best player in the world. It, it was ridiculous. Um, part two focused more on him. So his dad was like a very big adulterer, like cheating on his mom all the time, all this stuff. So Tiger almost like inherited that. Not that it's a gene, but he like inherited it and started doing it when he married uh, Aline. And he had, you know, two young kids. So the second part kind of talks more about that side of it and basically how his life kind of started spiraling out of control. Because when his dad died, his dad was a Navy SEAL. And his father was in the Vietnam War. And his, like, platoon or his, like, group that he was in, they would send behind enemy lines with no guns. They would mm-hmm. just send him behind enemy lines with, like, grenades and bombs. And they would have to strategically plant them and then get back to the U.S. side. That's crazy. So I'm sure he saw some stuff. <laughs> yeah. And so when his dad died, T- Tiger wa- started training with the Navy SEALs. Because he wanted, he like felt like he lost that piece of himself and he could get closer to his dad by training with the, you know, the same outfit that his dad trained with. And that's what fucked up his knees and his back. Because he would do like active shooter drills where they'd go in and like clear houses. So they have like the Navy SEAL sites where you go into like the houses and you got to clear it room by room. And then you got to do the obstacle courses and all that stuff. So he like messed up his body doing that. Um... So then he would, you know, he had a bunch of surgeries, so he'd have to take pain pills. And um, I didn't know he was, like, really good friends with Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley. So they would go to Vegas, like, all the time. And those guys were, like, notorious, like, partiers and gamblers. And so he fell in with that scene. But it it was a really, really good documentary just showing his, like, rise, but all the pressure he had, how he exceeded expectations, and then his fall, but then his, like, rebound. So it comes up to present day, and then him winning the Masters uh, in 2019. So it, awesome. it was pretty Sounds cool. really good. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, like, golf, golf is popular because of Tiger Woods. Yeah. yeah. And even when he, like, first came back, uh, one of the first majors he played was the Masters. And the president of the Masters held a press conference basically just, like, trashing him saying that, like, Tiger Woods is coming back, but his conduct failed us, and blah, 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 all this stuff. And one of the uh, people they had in the documentary was Bryant Gumbel. So he does, like, the all the inside the NFL. Like, he he does a bunch of sports stuff. And he's like, it it makes no sense that, like, you, the master, like, imagine if, like, Phil Mickelson, that happened to him. Do you think the guy, the head of the Masters would have a press conference, like, talking about Phil Mickelson cheating on his wife? Yeah. Like, they're only doing it because of Tiger Woods. So they yeah. did bring, like, the racial aspect into it, too. That, like, the, basically Tiger Woods was doing so well for so long that people stopped rooting for him, and they just wanted to see him fail. And then when he mm-hmm. failed, people were like, see? Like, we told you, instead of, like, supporting him. Um, so it, it was very interesting, but you're right. I mean, the only reason people, are, like, our age and younger watch or know golf is because of Tiger Woods. Yeah, like right. the, between the video game, between Nike, like all that stuff. I mean, he's oh my his god, own the thing. video game. That's like, pff, if I wasn't playing, like if I if I wasn't playing NHL with my friends growing up, I was playing Tiger Woods PGA Tour. Yeah, yeah. and like me and all, like I, I still play golf with with those guys. Don't play hockey with them anymore because yeah, you know, that ship has sailed. But well, golf is like something hockey, you you appreciate more too as you get older. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I, I think that Tiger Woods, and I'm sure they say a lot in the documentary about it, but, like, I can't even imagine the success that came to Nike from Tiger Woods. Like, oh they broke God. into a whole new sport because of it. Like, I mean, they, and yeah. they dominate the sport. Yeah, Nike Nike had no representation in golf. Yeah, it's crazy. And they, they saw him as the next Michael Jordan, and he was. Right, exactly. If, if, and he probably has exceeded it. Um, oh, just totally. with, like, hats and, like, what, what do you think they spend on creating a Nike hat that Tiger wears or a Nike sweater vest that Tiger wears. Like, there's nothing that goes into that. Yeah. And they can sell that for... And you know what? Golf is an expensive sport. It's played by people who have, you know, extra income. So they're going to spend the money on it. Um, But my favorite part was towards the end and they had his biographer on and uh, it was when Tiger had come back and he was playing the Masters and all the young guys who hadn't played with Tiger in a while, they're like, oh, I can't wait. 
like, I hope it's me and Tiger on the la- on the Sunday. Like, me against him. Like, you know, we're going to be playing that. And he's like, oh, you know, the, oh, they are interviewing all the guys, and they go to his biographer, and it's like, the fuck you do? You do not want to be playing against Tiger Woods on a Sunday. <laughs> and then they showed that Sunday, it was on, like, the 15th hole, and, like, Tiger was in second, and the guy in first, third, fourth, and fifth on a par three all hit their ball into the water. And Tiger <laughs> Tiger puts it like five feet from the pin, takes the lead, ends up winning the tournament. And the guy's like, you know, you don't, you say you want it, but like when he's focused, he it's just like a different world you're in. Yeah. It's like playing against Michael Jordan. Yeah, he just he he's he psychs you out one, but he's also the best. So you're just at such a disadvantage, talent wise and mentally. Well, um, well, like playing against Brady, right, Matt? That's right. I know that now. <laughs> I hope he can do that this weekend. That's cool. That, that sounds that sounds really interesting. I might check that out. Yeah, it was really good. Two parts, so it's like an hour and a half each part. Um, it's on HBO Max. I really enjoyed it. Mm. Um, what I didn't get to last week was Broadchurch, which mm, I love. This is what I'm excited about. Yeah, watched all three seasons. Um, Miller. But, uh, Miller. <laughs> Miller. It was really, really good. So... Uh, for those who don't know what it is, it's um, it's a British like cop drama on Netflix, and it takes place in. Is it? I don't know if it's a fictional city or not. Yeah, it's a it's a fictional a, a fictional city, city a, a but it's in church. like like on the coast southwestern England. Oh, gotcha. Um, so it's very similar to The Killing, not as gritty, um, but very similar to The Killing. So it's like a cop crime drama, and it focuses on um, the first season, like a a young boy gets killed and he's just like discovered on the beach. So the first season they focus on that murder from the cop's perspective, from the family's perspective and from the community perspective. It's a very tight knit community. Like everyone knows each other. Um, so like someone, someone, they know, someone, whoever did this know knew the kid. Yeah. So it's like a whodunit and they do a great job of kind of incriminating everyone. Like, yeah. every, no, everyone looks suspicious. Like, from the dad to the dad's work friend to, yep. like, family friends to the priest to, like, everyone. To the woman living and, in the... And then, like, it's it's really interesting, too, because you find out, like, this this small town where everyone knows everybody. Like, you, you and you see it from the Miller's perspective, and she's like, oh, no, th- this person could never do that. And, like, she finds out about all of the secrets that mm. people who are her friends hide from one another. Yeah. It it it's really cool and like each episode you uncover like a different layer. It's like it's like the show's like an onion like you're just peeling a, a new layer every episode. Mm-hmm. Um but Olivia Coleman and David Tennant play the two cops and David Tennant is brought in from a different city. Um to investigate this murder so it's kind of he's, cool. a, he's an experienced the, detective. Yeah, like detective and it's kind of cool seeing his perspective because he looks as everyone as suspicious whereas miller olivia coleman's character is like no like i my kids go to school with like you know th- these people or we go to church together so that right. dichotomy is, is very interesting uh i thought i thought it was really really good so the first season focuses on that the second season is the trial of the accused killer of the boy, and then also uh, David Tennant's character, they circle back to a previous um, homicide that he was working on. Right. So, like, in season one, David Tennant's character is, like, haunted by a a case from his past. And that's part of the reason why he's in Broadchurch, too, to, like, you know, to, to atone, atone for, for screwing up the, the, first, the first case. And yep. even, like, when, they're dis- when they discover the body on the beach... He's walking over to it and he's like, not again, not again. Yeah. And so they get into that in season two, which I thought was really good. Um, I, season two was the, the, obviously the trial part was really frustrating to watch, to like, to, to see, you know, oh, piss every, me like off. everything get twisted, like the truth get twisted in like in the favor of the, the accused mm. killer um so that was really frustrating but it was it was satisfying like you know they they did a good job of of wrapping that that season up by like they did a, i thought they did a good job of wrapping it up yeah i did too uh and like the woman who played the defense attorney was like m- so infuriating but in a good way like she that yeah. was her role um yeah. i wish phoebe waller bridge was in it a little more 
but it, it's yeah. but she was she just played like a secondary character um so she yeah. played have you ever seen fleabag matt no but i know with, i know the with, show I'd, yeah, so she, the main character in that, like, the creator, so she plays, like, the defense attorney's, um, like, helper. So she gets, like, gets all the paperwork and stuff together. So not right. a huge role. But season two is good, and then season three... Um, so I really liked season three because I had no idea who did it in season three. And I, I like I told you, I guessed, I guessed pretty early on at the, the killer in season one. Mm. Um, even though, like, I was suspicious of people along the way. Um, but I, I had no idea who it was in, in season three. I didn't either. Season three, honestly, I, the seasons for me, like went in order of how I liked them. I thought season one was the, well, was my favorite one, then two, and then three was my least favorite. I, it was still good. Um, but I just, I think I just liked like the cast in seasons one and two so much. Yeah. That like, cause you kind of introduce a whole new cast, still the same main detective. Right. Um, yeah. They, they kept, they kept the main family around for season three like i thought that was nice how that was interesting how they kept um you know the wife and the husband uh the two parents of the the kid that got murdered in season one i thought that was cool how they kept them around yeah and cre- creatively too like the wife was like the grief the kind of like the rape counselor um, right so it made sense for her to be involved mm-hmm. um but it was interesting like for like there's never any guns like none of the cops no one has a gun Nobody, they don't, they don't have guns in it. There's just no gun. Yeah, it's it's crazy though because if you if this was like an Americanized show, it'd oh. be shootouts every episode or at least yep. guns drawn, but there's no guns at all. It was so it was, it was kind of refreshing, but also like you know especially I think it was season one when they they get up to like the boathouse and the guy just runs past the cops. Yeah, it's like well if you had a gun you could have held him in check. Could have just got them. Um, but it was pretty interesting. But the one character I hated hated was the dad oh my god the main guy he was such a piece of shit his poor he wife really was his poor wife just lost her son then now she's pregnant and he's constantly going off to like wallow like oh yep. poor me uh, like he just sucked yeah so i didn't did. like him but i liked everyone else I, I thought it was i thought it was a really good show highly recommend um broad church yeah and it's a quick what i mean what is it uh it's like three eight, seasons, eight episodes of piece, like forty minutes, fifty minutes max for yeah. all of them, and they're like interesting too. So you want to keep watching. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great binge to watch them in bunches. Yeah. Um, I'm glad so you on liked to, it. Yeah, onto movies. I also watched The Princess Bride. Holly and I watched it um, the other day. First Love time. Love that movie. No, I haven't oh, seen man. it in a while though. Um, just like it's such a pleasant movie. Yeah. It like it's such a serious plot, but it's just so like comedic. <laughs> Like, everything's happening serious, but it's so light. Uh, I, I just love that movie. Love seeing Andre the Giant. He's so good as, as Fezzik. Um, but I was telling Holly, because in the Andre the Giant documentary on HBO, they have they interview Rob Reiner and Billy Crystal. And they talk about him doing that movie, and that was kind of towards the end of his life. So there's a scene at the end when the princess, like, jumps out of the window and Andre catches her in his arms. Mm. So he was like his back was so bad he he couldn't support Robin Wright in like his arms. Oh so wow! So Rob Reiner was saying for that scene they had to lower her on strings because he couldn't carry her weight and she only weighed like one hundred twenty pounds. <laughs> yes, um, he was hurting. But yeah, he he was hurting. But I love Mandy Patinkin in that movie is my favorite. He's so good. Yeah, like the the dueling scene with him in um, is it Carrie? How do you pronounce his name? Els. Ellis? Carrie Els. Yeah. Yeah, I love that scene when they're on top of the mountain and they're just like chit-chatting. Um, love that. Great movie. So that was a fun watch. And then I watched... So Goodfellas is on Netflix. The so best. I'm like, I gotta watch, the I gotta watch best. Goodfellas. The best. My second favorite Scorsese movie. Um, and then I'm like, you know what? I, I, was, I was texting Matt. And I'm like, you know, the Goodfellas casino battle because they're a similar movie, similar plot. Obviously some similar actors with De Niro and Pesci. Um, and you were saying that there's someone who thinks Casino is better than Goodfellas. Yeah, Mark, Mark, mm. our, my buddy Mark, <coughs> our buddy Mark, Adam, your director, your fearless director, thinks I, that Casino well, is better than Goodfellas. They're Mark, not even I in mean, the same breath. Now, so I, watched, now I think that to be fair... I wouldn't I, go that far, but I prefer Goodfellas. No, 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 not, in, as far as movies in general go, Goodfellas is so far ahead of Casino in my book. 
yeah, but I, I think agree. when you're talking about Scorsese, I think that I think it's probably Goodfellas then Casino. Personally. See, I like the the part is my favorite. Scorsese movie. The Departed, the is, Departed is my favorite Scorsese I, movie as well. I can't get over the some of the performances in Casino. They just like they really bother me. You watch Casino well, too, right? I watch Casino today on Netflix because it's not anywhere. Jeez, else. big big um, day. Yeah, well, so the thing, so Goodfellas is, in my opinion, like kind of like the perfect mob movie. It's it's just really good. Everyone plays their part really well. The this, it's very hard to do a good mob movie and also have, like, a family side of it. In Goodfellas, they really don't, you know, Lorraine Bracco, like, his wife, they, she's in it, but she's not, you know, and then she kind of, like, joins him towards the end um, of, of Henry Hill. But it's not a big part of the movie. Yeah. They try to, Sharon Stone, as great as she I, is in the movie and as great as she is as an actress, <laughs> it doesn't fit into, it shouldn't be the same movie. I hate Sharon Stone's performance in Good Casino. I hate it. And, and I, maybe that and like, maybe that denotes a good performance, but I hate it. But the, in the stuff it. with like Joe Pesci's character was so unnecessary. Like, why does she have to hook up with him? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it did, didn't work. Like, none of that worked for me. And it, you know what? It's so Casino's like thirty five minutes longer than Goodfellas, and that is a big detriment too. Because Goodfellas is just it's two hours and twenty five minutes. Yeah, and there's no wasted scenes. There's no it wasted. It goes time. by so quick. Goodfellas goes by very quick. Casino, I was, I'm, I'm finding myself like pausing it. It drags. Looking, it yeah, does. it drags. It's like it's just not. I don't know. I just don't think it's good. There's and, not a point in Goodfellas that it drags. No, and we got our name from the final scene in Goodfellas, when Henry Hill's standing in his door yeah. and he's you know pissed about not being a big shot anymore. He's like, nobody. I'm just an average nobody. I'm an average nobody. Yep. So, <laughs> um, that's where the average nobodies comes from. But I did notice something very funny in both movies. As both movies go on. You have to look at Robert De Niro's character's glasses. They get comically large. Like, <laughs> yeah, they and do. His, his suits, his suits get more and more outrageous too. He, in Casino, they do, but in Casino, some of them are pretty sharp. Yeah, it, it's just like Robert De Niro's characters in these movies, in Scorsese movies. Scorsese does a good, such a good job of like pulling these characters right out of real life and putting them to a script and then putting them in his movie. Like, that makes total sense. Like, this guy is a, you know, a cold-blooded murderer, gangster, right? All that stuff. But when the man leaves the house in the morning and he needs a pair of readers, he's just grabbing whatever's closest. He doesn't have, like, you know what I mean? Like, he's just like an every, he's an every, he's an everyday man. He's, he's a salt-of-the-earth person, just like anybody else would do the same thing. And it didn't matter to him. He's throwing these glasses on. He's reading the newspaper, whatever. Like, he's throwing the, you know. It's yeah. just it's so funny. It's like little things like that that Scorsese does in his movies that put it over the top. It's it's fit, so good. Yeah. So I, I, I have something interesting. I'm not sure if I've told you guys this about Robert De Niro. Um, He's your real dad. So, yes. Actually, I want to say this. During Celebrity Birthdays, today's my dad's birthday. Oh! So, that's yeah. right there. <laughs> Big shout. I know he's listening out there. <laughs> um, but so one of, one of Jen's friends... At work, well, they don't work together anymore, but they're still like you know she's still they still talk all the time and they're they're pretty close. Um, this girl's boyfriend, her is related to Robert De Niro, like wow. so close that he is over for family parties and call they call him Uncle Bob. That's I, what he goes by. That's Uncle why Bob. Are they, why that's incredible. Are they, is Jen still friends with this girl? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, gotta get, gotta get Uncle Bob. Gotta, at the keep, him gotta keep him close. Gotta keep him close. That's awesome. I I, yeah. I mean De Niro like De Niro is great. He Pesci's my favorite part of Goodfellas. I think his accent bothers me in Casino. Yeah, I don't know why he just didn't play the Goodfellas character like that accent. Well, he has this it's, weird like. It's tough to be as is mad it be a madman like that for multiple movies. <laughs> it is, but he does it so good. Yeah. Like I love like. Oh my god! Uh, and yeah, how, how this is Goodfellas is, is the birth of all of these gangster actors that are like pretty much gangster royalty now. Like they're all yeah. these actors that show up, like you were saying, Ryan. You texted me in the Sopranos and every other fucking mob movie there is. They show up. They are royalty. They got their start in Goodfellas. Yep. Yeah, and just in the Sopranos, you have Christopher, you have yep. Paulie Walnuts, you have Doctor Melfi. You have Phil Leotardo. Yeah. You have um, Carmine Lupertazzi, like the the main boss, Carmine. Yep. Yep. 
the, and there's probably a million more. Um, oh, I forgot the guy. The guy who has a twin brother, Beansy. Yeah, yeah. Like they're they're ev- they're everywhere, and they they and it's smart. Samuel because Jackson. They, they were so Samuel Jackson. <laughs> uh, you know who else is in it too? Who's? Uh, I wonder what kind of relationship David Chase and Scorsese have. I don't know because like Scorsese I mean, lives in that world. Like he, all of his yeah. movies are like a lot. Ninety percent of his movies are mob movies, and they use a lot of the same characters. And like David Chase went did this amazing show with all of these characters that <laughs> Scorsese would find as like his muses. You know what I mean? Like these guys that he loves. If David Chase was smart, he would have like asked Scorsese to be at least a consultant or something. Yeah, because Scorsese made it like his life's work to like yeah. kind of document that. Um, but they're both great movies, but yeah, I can't imagine like putting Goodfellas and Casino on the same level of movies for me. But I'd be interested to hear the other side of the argument. Yeah. Maybe Mark's really into the comically oversized glasses. I don't know. Right? Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. <laughs> but the, the, the end of Casino, though, it's funny because De Niro's like looking, and then he looks up to the camera, and his eyes are huge. <laughs> he looks like Bubbles from Trailer yes, Park yeah. Boys. And I'm like, yeah. come on. <laughs> You just it takes me right out of the movie, but it it's very funny. Um, so I have other ones, but I don't want to go too long, so I'll save them for next week. Okay. Awesome. I don't know whoever wants um, to go next. Adam, you can I'll, go. I'll go. Yeah, I'll go next. Um, so I watched the Night Stalker, um, which which I really I thought was really good. I've been watching so Jen's like show is Bones, and like it, it was on for like ever. There's so many seasons of Bones, it's insane, and. Like the two main, what dry, like I like the show, I do, uh, but I'm in and out. I haven't seen every episode that she watches. I'm in and out. She keeps me updated. Um, I like it because there's you know a payoff in every episode, but there's handfuls that like connect with with other ones. But something that drives me nuts about it is the will they won't they of the two main characters. That's on season six, and they like they haven't gotten together yet. So, but I, I think we're close to that happening here. Season six. Um, Season six. There's you gotta, pull, Ryan, you gotta pull the trigger either way. There's like twelve seasons, something insane. Of Bones? Yeah. Who's who's greenlighting these new seasons of Bones? I bet Connor uh, watches Bones. It's probably apparently Connor. Apparently it was Connor super popular Bones. though. <laughs> yeah. To be on for twelve seasons, there's like hundred and forty something episodes. You either have you to be what, super though? popular or the people at the network for Oh no, I'm sorry, there's like there's like two hundred something episodes. Yeah. Do you know what though? I'm so out of like the network TV bubble. Right. That, like, you could tell me that, you know, Bones is on for 200 episodes, and I, would, I wouldn't I would even know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just don't, there's nothing, even, like, shows I watch that are on, like, you know, ABC, NBC, Fox, I watch them on Hulu or something, I don't. Yeah. Nothing's appointment television, so it just doesn't feel the same. Yeah. So, That's 12 crazy, seasons, though. 2005 to 2017, 245 episodes. That's nuts. But it's um, pretty, it, no. Uh, you know what? You know what? I can't. There's one of the characters. You guys have. You guys have seen How High, right? Yeah. Yes. So you know, like the the hall monitor character, the curly hair guy with the bicycle, uh... and he becomes like a pothead too, and like joins their crew. But like he's always trying to get him in trouble, and he like works for the dean. Well, anyways, he's like such a goofball in How High, and he's like this. He's like the cool guy lab tech in Bones. I, I can't. I can't get past it. And actually, the, the main actress is Emily Deschanel, Zoe Deschanel's older sister. Ooh. And Zoe makes a cameo, and I caught it in one of the episodes, and she's like the opposite of Jess from New Girl. Like super serious, super smart. You know what I mean? It's it pretty funny. Um, I Jeffrey also watched, I watched this movie, Unhinged, at my sister's request. Now, you guys know my sister. And she is not a TV person. She's always zipping around, so she does she does not like sit down and watch TV. But she watched this movie Unhinged, starring Russell Crowe. I've seen and that. She, you've seen it? No, I've seen like it advertised everywhere. Sorry. Oh, okay. So it's about like this guy is having a bad fucking day, and this woman beeps at him in traffic, and the rest of it does not go well. Wait, so for this her. is the Adam. This is the Adam. Oh, true life story. Hit too close to home for you, Adam. Well, so. Like Unhinged. she told me, it's it's this the whole movie is extreme from start to finish, and I agree that it is. And this, like, if you guys ever want to watch it, this is the first scene. It's not really a spoiler. Russell Crowe is like sitting in his truck in front of a house, like downing a bottle of pills in his house, mm. right, mm. in his car, and he gets out of the car, 
and he's got a a can of gasoline in one hand and a giant, the biggest fucking hammer I've ever seen in the other hand. And he goes up to this house and he beats the door down with the hammer and you see the light go on and you know, a man and a woman, you can't really see him come down the stairs. It's all like from the sidewalk. You see this yeah. and he hits the guy in the head once with the hammer. He's down, hits him again, chases the wife. You hear screaming you hear it stops screaming and then he burns the house down. Mm. And I said that to my sister, like, whoa, extreme from the start. She goes, oh, it gets crazier. How does it get, <laughs> how does it get crazier? One, th- one a- day Adam's <laughs> going to be in traffic for just a second too long and he's going to detach from reality. And then this, <laughs> this is what this is. It'll be unhinged be. too. <laughs> it's, so the, the whole like plot starts is this woman and she's like, you know, she's going through a divorce. She's got a son, her, her brother and his, his fiance are living with them. You know, she's late all the time and, uh, you know, she's, she's just really down all the time. And so she wants to get her son to school in time so he doesn't get detention for being late. And she's like in traffic and this pickup truck is in front of her and he's not going through a green light. So she like lays on the horn and like he doesn't move still. And she, you know, so she goes around him and beeps on the horn and says, oh, what the hell? And then, like, the truck catches up to her in in uh, in line and she, like, refuses to apologize. And Russell Crowe does not take that well. And this is after the hammer attack? Y- yes. When okay. did this movie come out? I want to watch this. Recently. Like, last year. <laughs> it was it's, It was predictable. But it was it was I enjoyed it. It was pretty. Is it pretty is good. it fat Russell Crowe or skinny Russell Crowe? He looks fat. There, it's morbidly obese Russell Crowe. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, I mean I shouldn't be talking, but yeah, yeah he's he, big. He looks he looks he, like he's got a big face. He does. He does. He's big face and like, Russell Crowe. And like he, uh, like I can't. I don't even want to go into it with you too much because like the things that he does to this poor woman is like I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. So he's so the bad ex- guy. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, he is. Okay. Um, so I recommend that one. I also uh, like. I I noticed that HBO Max has like all of the Batman animated series and mm. movies. So I popped on uh, Batman: Mask of the Phantasm the other day as like one of the the more famous animated movies. It was so good. It's like a good so one. simple. The animated like the animated movies and show are so good because like they can stay closest to the the comic books. Yeah. And like I'll say it till till I'm blue in the face, but nobody's Joker laugh beats Mark Hamill's Joker laugh. That's the best one. It's Hands best. down. Like so like so crazy, so sinister. It, it can it can hit you in so many different ways and uh that like the the phantasm villain is like more of a, a one off, which is it's really cool how they how it's done. Um, and last but not least, I've been at my my friend Tim's request. I've been doing a rewatch of Workaholics, um, and it's been fucking hysterical. I'm in season two. I forgot how hilarious that show really was, and like that came out at the perfect time in our lives. We're like we're we're around the same age as those guys, and like yeah. That was around the summer of drinking. Like we were doing all the same things that those guys were doing. So that's like that one. That one really hit home at the time, and and going back to watch it has been really fun. Yeah, um, so I, like, group, if you're looking though. for a, a light show to go back and watch, Workaholics is a, a good one. That's on Hulu, um, right? Yeah, it's on Hulu. Um, oh, and I've been watching Lost, but I'll when you go through your list, Matt, we can do Lost at the same time. Yes, oh, yes. I like that. Okay. So I'll go through a couple quickly. So I watched. I also watched Night Stalker. Said that at the top. Um, I watched this movie called The Phenomenon. Okay, get ready. So this came out in 2020. It has an 88 percent as of the time I watched it on Rotten Tomatoes, and it's been getting critical critical acclaim. It is a documentary about aliens. Aliens Whoa. have been here. They are here now. What's it on? It's on. Uh, I had to rent it on Amazon. It was like three three ninety nine. But listen, okay. let me tell you. There's no way that aliens have not been here. I'm, they, I'm ready to, to. I'm ready to sign out right listen, now and go listen, watch fellas, this thing. They walk among us. This is it. This is the. This is it. It's terrifying. But um, anyway, it, the documentary basically 
talks about all of the UFO documents that have been declassified over the last few years and all of the um, encounters that we've had in recent times where there's been like footage and, you know, uh, you know, um, close encounters of the third kind, I guess is what it is. It's like is, by visual. Is there, is there footage? So there is footage of like alien ships but like little specks on like and so hey i'm gonna get into this fighter jets cost hundreds of millions of dollars and they have the worst camera systems on there that i've ever seen <laughs> i could buy a thousand dollar iphone and have a million times better video than any of these fucking fighter jets i don't understand it i don't understand from how further you, away too it's bananas to me any fucking guy who's driving uber that has a dash cam has a better camera than an f-16 it's fucking <laughs> lunacy it's absolute lunacy so they have this like anyway. There's a few. A few of them have been on Joe Rogan, but there's this. Um, I forget his name now. David something. He was an a, uh, Air Force pilot. He went out and they were doing routine shit, and they they, they found they found saw this flying craft that they describe as, and you can search it as the Tic Tac UFO. It looked like a mm -hmm. Tic Tac. And it was hovering above the water, like, real low out in the ocean. And it was doing, like, all this, like, erratic movement. And this is, like, a guy who's, like, not a crazy person. Like, this is a person who also has a, someone to back up his story. Like, they have, they, he has, like, thing. And he has nothing to gain from it. He's, you know, he's never tried to, like, sell the story. This is just someone, like, stating what he saw. And, like, this thing, like, took off. And he didn't know where it was. Then all of a sudden it popped back up on radar, like, miles and miles away where there's no possible way it could have got there in the time that we know how things travel on earth like there's no possible way then you then they get and they talk with other like people around the world that have supposedly spotted aliens those can be a little shaky it's like okay you were a little kid when you saw this like how but then there's all the ones that are so compelling and then there's people in congress and the government that talk about the documents they have and like this guy was basically saying how he's like we haven't even scratched the surface of what they've divulge to the to the to the people of the United States. It's bananas. There are aliens. Like it's just a fact. You're and convinced. I'm convinced, absolutely convinced, and it makes me super excited because one, because if they are here, then that means they have technology far, far, far superior to ours. Mm -hmm. Which means that if we can figure out how to harness that technology, that means that all of my space dreams have all come true at once mm -hmm. like which is, which is incredible for the human race something that we probably won't maybe won't witness depending on how fast we can implement this shit and how fast it gets out <laughs> into the public but like it's ha it's gonna happen like this will happen like like bending laws of physics that we don't even know exist you know mathematic i'm not even gonna pretend like i know but mathematic calculations how they do all this shit with their ships there are aliens there there's life out there that's a, that's an undeniable fact. The universe is too big for us to think that we are special. So yeah. did they say why like they haven't necessarily like touched down here yet? Or I mean, I think they have. I, I think they I think they have. I just think they've been very secretive about it. I sound like a crazy person. I know, but I think that they've just think been so. secret about it. I think that the government's also done a good job of hiding it. I also think that they've done it in plain sight and we just chalk it up as people being crazy. Like, Oh yeah. Aliens. That's funny. Like yeah. fucking like, yeah. Like Mars attacks. Right? No, like it, real shit. So anyway, if the phenomenon, it's a great documentary. It's very compelling. And just like, it kind of like it aggregates every UFO story you've ever heard. And also new stuff and just kind of like puts it all together and kind of tells you like, okay, this is believable. This is, I don't know about that. Here's something that's true. And, or here's something that is more believable and, very good. Cool. So I feel like if there are more things, for, like how, there's no way Trump's going to keep his mouth shut about this, right? I, like why <laughs> he's got to come out with something? Maybe they didn't tell him. Well, they were saying they don't. They don't even tell the president everything. This is stuff like CIA stuff that's been that's been on under lock and key for decades and decades that they are they they just don't divulge because it's like a need to know basis type thing, which that's is pretty true. fast. Like, what are you going to say? Like, hey, Mr. President, uh, found the Tic Tac. They, they they started. Oh, I'm too busy. Whole... I'm too busy in front of the stocks machine. I'm pressing my buttons and pulling my levers to make the stocks go up and down. The, uh, time to time to hire the gas prices. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure <laughs> that I'm pretty sure that uh, I forget which administration it was, but during a presidential administration, they started a. It might have been Obama. 
they started essentially a task force for combing through this like alien sightings. Like this, they have a whole task force dedicated to it. I think it was Obama. I'm not sure. Hey, have you guys seen? I recommended this a while back. It was called The Vast of Night. It's it's a Prime of original, um, and it's like set in the 1950s. And it's like it's really really well done. It's a movie, but it's it's a really really well done of what you know, an alien kid looking at looking for not looking for but you know discovering. Some sort of life, uh, you know, in New Mexico in the 1950s. It's it's real. It was really well done. So, and it, like, there's a lot of dialogue, but the the characters play their they play themselves so well. And for like a movie with nobody in it, you'll recognize. And you know, it's it was good. What's it called? So I, I think I think you'd be into it, both of you guys. What's it called? The Vast of Night. The Vast of Night. Okay, I've never seen it. Um, anyway, yeah, so the phenomenon, very good. Uh, if you're into that type of shit, that's for you. The Vast of Night, I'm looking up right now. Okay. Um, I also watched Mystic Pizza for the first time. I just, I just happened to be scrolling. I think it was on Netflix. I think. That Julia Roberts? Yeah. So this movie has a little bit of everything. It's Julia Roberts, Lily Taylor, Pizza, Vincent D'Ofrino, or D'Ofrio. How do you say his name? Vincent. D'Ofrio. D'Ofrio. Diaphrio. The Maid from Two and a Half Men, Young Love, Betrayal, The 80s, Pizza, Young Matt Damon, A Small Town in Connecticut. I wrote that while I was... While, while I was I, <laughs> that was just like bullet points of everything that it had, and I just made it into one long sentence. Anyway, it reminded me of the, uh, the skit from uh, SNL. The uh, God, Bill Hader's character. Uh, Stefan. Yeah. yeah. This has everything. It has everything. Anyway, um, great movie. Uh, these are some of my favorite lines from it. This is Julia Roberts. Lobster for breakfast, lobster for lunch. Fucking lo- a lot of lobster here. And then uh, this is uh, Lily Taylor. These Portuguese girls are very hard to train. And then uh, Vincent D'Ofrio, uh, you only love my dick, said to Lily Taylor. <laughs> it's a, it, all right, so t- to stop being like just funny about it, but it's, it's a really good movie. It's really charming. And it's about this like small town in it's Mystic, Connecticut, and these um, these three women work at a pizza place. It's Julia Roberts, Lily Taylor, and the other actress you would recognize. She was in Sons of Anarchy. Um, she was one of the detectives. Uh, you would recognize her, but it's about them three: Julia Roberts and the detective from Sons of Anarchy are sisters, and Lily Taylor just uh, works at the pizza shop. And then the owner of the pizza shop is the maid from Two and a Half Men. Who just died recently? I forget her name. Um, she was in a lot of Adam Sandler movies too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so it's about them and like they all have like you know Julia Roberts is kind of like the townie and her sister's like going off to Yale and she has her things and then Lily Taylor's like was gonna get married to Vincent D'Ofrio but she, then she like decided not to and she doesn't know what she's doing with her life and all this. It's it's a very good like little slice of life romantic comedy. Kind of just like a really just a feel good movie. Um, very good. I liked it a lot. Um, I also started watching. Or I, I mean, I watched Hail Satan question mark. Uh, it, it was awesome. So essentially, yeah. we, Ryan talked about it already, but it's essentially like the the the, the satanic temple. Right. That's what they call it. Uh, yep. TST. They started this organization as kind of like a counterculture movement against not necessarily not, and they're, they always, they say this like on their way on the website, they're not against Christians. Like that's not what they are. They are just for the equality of religion. And they think that religion shouldn't be demonstrated on government property or in government, in like in governmental form, which I totally 100% agree with. So I guess I'm a Satanist. Um, that's right. That's right. That's what I took from that. Hail Satan. It's also like, how fucking, like, how lame is this? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. How fucking awesome is this? Hail Satan. And yeah. put the horns up. <laughs> Hail Satan, baby. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I find myself the, agreeing with them a lot. <laughs> right. It, it's, they just like, and it's so funny, like, they do all these things as like, I mean, not just shock value, but also, oh shit, hold on. Like, 
it is shock value and it isn't, but it's like everybody, all these straight laced Christians get their fucking panties in a bunch at the satan. You know what I mean? Like they wear them. Oh, they're wearing all black and they're they're doing weird shit. I mean, they have sure. tattoos. They have piercings. Some of them are are yes, are very, uh, very odd. And then you had like the the radicals that kind of got kicked out of the group. That was kind of weird, uh, saying they yep. wanted to kill people and all that. That's not what they're about. Um, I just thought it was yeah. fascinating, and it just was like. I don't know. I texted Sean. I was like, hey, you want a good feel good? You want a feel good documentary? And he's like, yeah. I was like, hail Satan. And then he texted me like a couple hours later. He goes, I guess I'm a Satanist now. Um, yeah. <laughs> you really like you find yourself agreeing with what they say because they're very logic based. It's, too. It's very logic based. And they're just like people don't like it's so fucked up the way that like Christianity is kind of like we are not a Christian nation. Like it's a nation. It says it in the Constitution. We are not. Like this, it's it's the separation of church and state is a, is a thing that it was this country was built on, and that's yeah. all they're arguing. And so I thought it was great. Like if if you want to put up a statue of the Ten Commandments, which that that um, oh my God, what was he? Was he a mayor? Was he the mayor of? Uh, no, he's like a congressman. Congressman in Oklahoma. He's trying to say that the Ten Commandments is not a religious thing. It's like so ridiculous. <laughs> and then like how they how they were they had like a prop of like the Ten Commandments statue stones that they were basing it after and it was just movie um movie marketing from charlton heston's the 10 commandments like the movie he was in back in the day yeah that's all it was is marketing it's just like it's not a christian thing it's just from a movie that they decided that that was how the, the tablets were going to look anyway but, um, yeah. great documentary it's on hulu check it out very good very light airy quick 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 you're in and out it um, is good yeah and it also made me look up uh where the boston chapter of tst meets so there's that you as might well. Might be going. I'm, I'm probably not going to go, but I just found it interesting. I want to know where they met. It'd be funny if they like met in like the at the Kowloon in Saugus or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> get some, get some <laughs> the they're, the they're, meeting, they're meeting at the Hooters off Route One. Uh, That's it. They got me. Uh, and then I started watching Your Honor. Let me tell you something. I st- I watched the first episode last night at midnight. I am. Uh, I finished episode seven today. Oh my god! All right, don't. Wow. Too much, I'm not gonna I'm say. Gonna I'm not gonna say anything, and I'm not gonna say anything about it other than this is a show that you should be watching. This is by the end of it, I have a feeling is gonna be like one of those shows that's like, have you seen Your Honor? Why not? Put that at the top of your list. Fantastic. Pretty good performances all around, but Brian Cranston, Brian fucking cranston delivering again the man who is the dad and malcolm in the middle is just coming with haymakers that's all he does now is haymakers so great fucking amazing i love it i'm gonna i mean when, when is it now i don't know when does it come on like when's the next episode uh sunday nights Are they're doing 10 for the first season i see that i have to check on that because as soon as the season's over i'm going to get showtime for like a month yeah I'm, i just I'm don't want to like subscription right now because i did the free trial but i think maybe i'll just have holly do the free trial because the, nice. the only thing i don't there's nothing else on showtime i would watch so i don't want to like buy showtime it looks like there's uh nine parts okay does it make sense you're up, does right? it make sense that two parts are coming out on the same day maybe it could be like a two-part finale it looks like eight it looks like eight and nine are coming out january 31st Hmm. Okay, so maybe they're taking a week off. Yes, yeah, January seventeenth was part seven, and then eight and nine on the thirty first. Gotcha. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it would make sense not to run the finale on Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, it's so good, and it's refreshing not to have a show based in like New York City or L.A. Yeah, I like th- that's <laughs> that. I kind of drew me to it right away. Was like the New Orleans. Yes, it, part of it. It's like nice to have this. Like, it's a totally different. You get a nice diff- bit of culture from that area of the country. And not just like a big, like, like uh, you know, it, how many times have we seen a show where it's New York, but it's fucking shot in Chicago and Toronto and, you know, Boston. It's just like, it's not, but this feels like it's New Orleans. It's cool. It feels mm-hmm. like New Orleans. So very good. I love it. And uh, I can't wait to finish it. <laughs> I can't wait to finish it. I'm going to have to go back to Wilfred though, after this, because I'm, ca- <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all caught up until the 31st now, I guess. So. That's it for and me. then, um, well, we got chat lost. Yeah. Oh, right. So I just so uh, let me let me start by yeah, saying right. this. All right. So me and Ryan have seen. Lo- obviously, Ryan's finished, and I'm yes. farther than you, Adam. But talk about how far are you? Are you? I, I am on the last episode of season two right now. It is getting wild. 
I'm so I'm like four or five episodes into season two. Okay. What happened like, last for you? Um. Okay. So they they found they got into the hatch. They found that guy. He Desmond. took off. So they're like doing the numbers every time now. Um, they found Michelle Rodriguez. Well, Michelle Rodriguez found them. And there's like only a couple people in their crew. And Hurley decided that like, I'm not going to ration out this food. Let's just blow it out and, and give everybody, give the people what they want yeah. for, you know, for food. Because this is not going to last for, for 40 people. It's only going to cause problems. But like, let me tell you. I want to wrap this up tonight so I can go watch Lost. You know what I mean? It's like, so it, it's very <laughs> like it, it. It was like for me the beginning of I can't like you know people. I can't put this book down. I can't stop watching this TV show. Like it's it, just like, so. In honestly, guys, from like a couple episodes, the end of season one, almost through season four, there's really no bad episodes. It's yeah. just so, like all good. Season four I, I though like, is, is tough, right? That's the the writer strike season. Yeah, so that's when like it, it could get spotty, and you'll see. But like, w- like the end of season one, two, and three, it, it, you're you're gonna rifle through them. So what I like, I liked the first. I don't know. Let's call it ten episodes, right? And I really liked the, the sprinkling in of like the sort of sci-fi elements of the show. And then, like, it started to get really, really soap opera for me. Like, the fucking love triangle with Jack and Kate and Sawyer. That was like, Jack. oh, my God. Oh, Jack. This is going to go on for six more seasons. And then uh, Claire, Claire got taken. And it like, oh, now we're talking. And then, like, from there, it's just built and built and built. And now, like, all of a sudden, there's a fucking underground bunker. Some pirates took Walt. And there's a group of other people on the island. Like, it's – and the, the the monster almost got Locke and, like, I'm really into the uh, um, the backstory. So jo- John Locke is my favorite character and I I, I cannot stand Jack. I, I hate Jack. That. Jack's number one. Jack's but it does one. make sense because if you, if you love Locke, then, you, you know, you're not going to like Jack because it's well, – and I think I it's an epi- a title of one of the episodes. Yeah. A man of Science versus a Man of Faith. Yeah, so it's a season, season is, two premiere. Jack is living in the now. He's using logic to save everyone's life, and Locke's like, "Hey, look, I can walk again." Like, this no, you know, you know what really went They're up my ass right, with but... him. You know what really went up my ass with Jack is that he like was so quick to blame Locke for pushing Boone off a cliff uh, when Boone is like dazed and like on the brink of fucking death, and he's like he believes what Boone like doesn't believe it like conjures up that Locke did that to Boone in his head yeah but and goes after Locke but then when the lady the French woman from the woods comes out and says that there are others he's like nah she's crazy what come on yeah but also it's one or the Jack, other Jack was also his patience had worn thin with with um, John because of all the shit they've been doing like they, no one believed that they were going boar hunting anymore after like right. a week of them going out into the fucking woods trying to destroy the hatch. Like they said, him and um, Boone were going hog hunting, which was not the case. And he knew. Right. And so Jack was pissed off because he, in his mind, probably thought that this could have been avoided if you just, uh, you assholes, like, could just told someone what you were doing. Um, yeah. I, yeah. So that, I really like I mean, the... Boone's death, I think, was like more the culmination of Locke, it, really, kind of. The, just recently in an episode, Locke says something about the incident with Boone that is. Very eye opening to John Locke's character. I won't say it, but uh, I won't say anything about it. But it, but at that point, I do like John Locke, and I do like the him and him and Jack kind of have like a back and forth relationship. There's some parts where like Jack intrinsically trusts John, and there's no question about it. Like he trusts what he's doing. He knows that like it is the tough decision, but John is almost like that guy to make the tough decision. Just, Jack needs guys like Sawyer and John around him to make the decisions that he can't make. Right. The the three of them have a really good the I, Jack and you know Sawyer Kate is and removed Kate fits now into because that too. yes, but yes, yeah. Jack and Jack and Locke have a really good dynamic together. Like I like how you know there was one part recently was it was like Jack was acting like the boss and Locke was like, well, I, you know, 
I didn't know that I reported to you. I didn't know that I had to report to you. Right, like right. sort of giving him shit. Like you're you're not the fucking boss of me. Yeah. Like who made? But who, they do who make him. The, they do like appoint they him do. leader he, early on. Right. Everyone else does, but not Locke or. Sawyer. But I can I can see it from Jack's point of view because you have like this doctor who like when shit hit the fan he took charge. He yeah. started saving people. You know he became the quote unquote leader. And then the next three in line are a guy who got on the plane in a wheelchair and now believes the island's magical. Yeah. A con, a con man who nobody trusts. And Kate, who, like, for all, te- seems nice and, like, you know, can be helpful, but she's a fugitive, like, you find yeah. out. So, like, you can um, see why he feels the need to step up and be the leader. Because, I mean, that I really think, like, Saeed should have been thrust into 1B because oh, he's the man. Yeah. I love Saeed. Saeed is awesome. Um. Uh, yeah, how, it's Locke is really I, like I like Locke because he's he's playing with house money. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he got he got dropped on this island from from his life is, was pretty shitty back mm. in the real world, and <laughs> now he comes here and he's got a whole new life. So I get that he's you know he's playing with house money and he you know as far as as far as he's concerned he's you know he's lived his life and he's gonna just go for it from now on. Um, how far have you gotten in Michelle Rodriguez's character's, like, appearance? So, so she just dug, she just let them out of the pit and, like, brought them back to their, like, bunker. Okay. So very little, very, like, she got introduced, she met Jack at the airport, I saw that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, and then next part I saw of her, she got dumped into the pit with, uh, Mike and Sawyer and Jin. And, you know, obviously she was, it was a work. And, um, so then they, you know, they let the three of them out and took them back to their base. Yeah. Cool. So, but I'm in, I'm in, man. I'm so into it. Yeah. It's so good. And I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned Rousseau, Matt, because unfortunately, uh, the actress who, the actress who played her passed away a couple, two days ago. Oh, really? On Wednesday. Yeah. Mira, Mira Ferlan. Or Mira Furlan, uh, but Damon Lindelof, who was one of the writers and creators of Lost, and he also uh, did the Leftovers and Watchmen. He put like a nice little short tribute to her on his Instagram. Um, so he put Danielle Rousseau moves into the light. Rest in peace, Mira. We are deeply grateful for all you did to protect the island, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but she's like, she kind of stays a, a pretty important character for a bit. Um, but it's I I love it. I'm so so glad you guys are watching it. I'm very excited to like see your progression, especially through the first three seasons, because it so, gets it's not controversial that the end, but it people have differing opinions. So I want to ask you guys. So like Ryan, you obviously know the scene, the whole show, and Matt, you're ahead of me. But like gut instinct, you're in that bunker. The guy that's putting the code in every you know 108 minutes is gone. Do you continue? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not me. I'm just letting it go. Why? Well. But what do I know? You just, you just got into a bunker that has food, running water, shower, and everything, and you want to jeopardize that by not doing the one thing that the thing asked you to. It could be Especially nothing. You, but it you, could be something, well, and you're on an island with nothing. Then so what? My plane has already crashed. But what, my life what is, is the, over so anyway. What, my question yeah, but is... Yeah, that's such a selfish way to think about yeah. it. You have all these other people on the island. Right. My question is what... <laughs> what what is up. it... With, like, they even do it in shifts, so you don't have to, like, stay up all the time. Like, what... Why wouldn't you want... What, what is it... What is it... You could work out, a, like, out? a five-team shift. You, you, you just don't like, want to worry about it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm well, pushing I the button. Hope, I hope I never land on a desert island with you. I'm pushing hey. the button. Also, especially I'm, I'm, with all the weird shit happening, like yeah, there's like a smoke monster and yeah. If you well, you know what? Now, and... now that I like, now that I know, um, you know, because I'm at a point where Jack and Saeed are like, they're trying to find out where that magnetic field is coming from, and Saeed said something about like the only place I've ever heard of that pours con- that poured concrete like this was Chernobyl, and I'm like, oh, all mm-hmm. right. <laughs> But I, I'd want to know more about like why is this code? Why is this code the stopper? 
So Adam, they haven't reveal they haven't like talked about who the that guy in the bunker was yet. Just that Jack ran into him once while he was uh you know doing the stairs in a stadium. That's I, it. That I, just cool scene. His, I just got to I just got to his backstory. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he he's he's probably my second or third favorite character on the show. Desmond? Yeah. Mm, he's cool. he's awesome. So, it, it's cool because they like they introduce these characters but also like give them time to play out and make them worth investing into. You don't they don't just like introduce them for the sake of doing it. Yeah. So like the and I think that's why it was so good for so long because they weren't just relying on like the core cast. Yeah. Like you're you're putting new characters in that like people are going to enjoy watching. I I like um Michael too. Michael is such a good he's such a for, to this point at least such a good person. You know what I mean? And like uh, uh. I was I was so mad I was so mad at his wife. Yeah, his, <laughs> yeah, his... his wife is such a bitch. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he didn't really give her a lot of good reasons to... She just took the kid and went off to Amsterdam. She's it's like, ah, successful... you know what? I make, I make more money than you, so this kid's mine now. Yeah. It's I bullshit. Mean, that's, that's how it should work. Oh, man. But well, I'm psyched hope, about it. Yeah, I hope you guys I... keep watching so we can keep updating. Yeah. I know Justine. Justine's very interested. Yes. I, and then, she's she's I definitely it. a she def no. Hmm. I was gonna say I was gonna say she definitely likes Jack, but I don't know. Some I think she would get she would be a pissed off you know, by Jack too. Let, let's do no, it. No, she she loves Jack. You know who I hate? I Tell hate me. Claire. I hate oh. her <laughs> and her stupid fucking baby so much. I hate her. <laughs> I hate Charlie I hate too, accent. for that matter. I hate Charlie. I hate Charlie too. Charlie's useless. Oh, you to can't me. hate Charlie. I, right now, I hate Charlie. He's useless to me. Well, then, see, that's the thing. It's like there's so many episodes. There's 50 episodes in the first two seasons. Yeah, I've already gone hot and cold on so many characters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but you know what? The beauty of it, like the writing's so good and the characters are so strong. All it takes is one scene, and boom, you're flip flop to like liking them again. So, yeah. yeah, or or hating them could be opposite. Yep. I just yeah, I'm trying to think who. Oh, I mean, I I really hate Shannon. Really, really hate Shannon. Oh, Shannon sucks. Right? Good. Yes. I'm Kate glad, I'm sucks. Glad, I'm glad you would be. Uh, I, like, I don't I like hate Kate. Kate, but there's there's a part of me that doesn't like Kate as well. Saeed, I love Saeed. I think he's really good. You know who's the best that yeah. hasn't flipped? I just loved him the entire time. Jin. Who? Jin. Yes. Oh, what just, a beautiful! What a beautiful man! Look at that. Jin. People kill for that type of there, bone structure. There's this really funny scene, and this is from an episode I just watched, but it's not a spoiler of any kind. Hurley is walking; he's with somebody else, and they're walking along the jungle. And Hurley's trying to lead this person somewhere, and she's like, "We're not. We're getting lost." And he's like, "Here we are, private beach." And <laughs> and she goes, "This isn't a private beach. There's gin right there." And they turn the camera pans, and Jin's just like on the beach, like filleting a fish. And he just looks over and he waves, and he just goes back to it. I was like, "I fucking love Jin." He's so, I, he's so good. I actually, I actually just saw one like Hurley was. It was uh, a dream or something, but he was like pigging out in the the food storage, the pantry of the bunker. Yeah, and he turns around, and and Jin is there, and Jin's speaking perfect English, and he goes, "Jin." Are you speaking English? He goes, and he goes, no, you're speaking Korean. And then he starts speaking Korean. <laughs> yeah. It is insane, really like funny. how perfect English that actor speaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's no accent, there's no anything. Very and then he insane. also speaks perfect Korean. Yeah, very, very good show. I can't. I think yeah. I think I'm gonna start rewatching it again. Nice. So I can, I'll catch up to you guys in a couple days. Do it. Do I it. don't know if you will. <laughs> no, I will. Jen, Jen oh, and I are doing. Guys Jen are and I are there. doing well, three or four a night. Lindy and I watch like one or two every other night, so you probably have a good chance of catching up. Yeah, yeah. But I wanna, I wanna let I. I mean, I know what you're talking about, but it's always good to be refreshed. So maybe yeah. we'll start rewatching it again. Nice, yeah. nice. All right, this well, is just a strictly a lost podcast now. Yes, <laughs> that's it. Um, it's over. All With right, puppets. <laughs> well, yeah, right. We gotta do the puppet the puppet lost episode. Um, that's it for the Average Nobody's podcast number uh, 108 for January 22nd, 2021. AverageNobody's.com is where the blog lives. Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and Google Podcasts. And also Spotify is where our podcast lives. Aver- uh, YouTube.com slash The Average Nobody's is where all the video content lives. That means if you're listening to this as an audio podcast, stop being a dummy and watch our beautiful faces on YouTube. You can do that as well. Or do both. Listen to the audio podcast and come back and watch our faces. 
it's actually it's funny because when, when you watch the video version of it, it's really just Adam doing an impression of me, and and we're all just switching voices. It's not actually it's like, <laughs> ah, this is Adam right now talking. Perfect, perfect. This is, and this is Matt. Just like our Muppet impressions at the top of the show. It's perfect. <laughs> not hey, we got to do it for good luck. Not tone deaf. Go up. Bucks. Go. Hey, Bucks. Go Bucks. Big big game this weekend. Gotta be Aaron Rodgers. <sighs> Antonio Brown going down is not great. See, I think that's going to be a blessing in disguise because now Scotty Miller and the other guy, Johnson, Tristan Johnson or whatever. I I think this also – yeah, Tyler Johnson. I think this also means a bigger game for Gronk. And Brady. Yeah, right. That's the thing. They have more weapons, and I I don't think that's going to affect things at all. The hardest part is going to be, like, slowing down Rodgers. Vita Villa is back this week. One of our – bet he is – that's huge for our defensive line enormous so i love that and i love that godwin and evan still on the offense you can't forget them so yep. go bucks go bucks gotta go to the super bowl we're going to tampa let's do it um all right see you guys later